So Elegoo was nice enough to send over their new Neptune 3 Pro, and we're going to see how it compares to the original Neptune 3. And spoiler alert, it's better in almost every way. But when you do get this printer, you do need to assemble it, at least partially. Most of it is already put together. It's just a few bolts here and there to put this whole thing together, along with a few plugs to plug in. So it looks like they decided to keep the weird detachable screen, but they also changed it to being magnetic now, which I like a lot better. Another change they did is they removed the little adjustment wheels on your bed, so now it's completely solid mounted. So that means this printer uses auto bed leveling, and it probes the bed in 36 different points, and this is going to build a mesh in the software so it knows when to adjust to keep everything level for you. And after that, all you need to worry about is your Z offset, and you're pretty much ready to start printing. To actually get files on this printer to start printing, you have to upload them to an SD card, and to be more accurate, a micro SD card, which I absolutely hate using because they're so small and easy to lose. And this micro SD card came with the printer, and it has a test file on it that I'm going to print to make sure everything's working properly. I'm just going to use some marble PLA for this, and load it into the new direct drive unit that they have on this machine. And I'm actually pleasantly surprised on how quick this was to actually set up and get it to this point where I'm actually printing something. It was about 20 minutes, and that's with me doing all the recording for this as well. And not to mention how quiet this machine actually runs. I actually found myself checking on it a couple times because I didn't think it was still running. But anyways, here it is all finished, and it looks like it came out really nice and clean. And it easily just pops off the magnetic build plate. And like I just said, this looks pretty good, but it is just a test print. So let's try something a little bit different and new. This is some new filament that I got that is a tricolor silk PLA. And as you can see, this filament is three different colors all at once. And I thought I would print something that would look interesting in multicolor, so I'm going to print this little axolotl. And when slicing this, I forgot to turn off the brim option, but it didn't affect anything it looks like. But anyways, here it is all done, and it is a little bit stringy. And this is my first time printing with this material, so I'm going to have to tune it a little better next time. So let me get it off the build plate, clean it up, and let's see how it looks. And it looks like it came out pretty good with the interesting colors all mixing together, so every way you hold it, it looks like a different color. It does have a little bit of under extrusion in parts, and a little bit of blobbing here and there that just kind of pop off. So I definitely need to dial in the settings for this particular filament, but it does print. And honestly, I like to use 3D printers for practical printing, so things I can actually use. And with this printer having a direct drive setup, it is perfect for printing flexible filaments. So I designed a gasket or seal for some mirrors that I'm working on. And after just about an hour, I have my part. But flexible materials on a flex plate don't really just pop off. So it needed a little bit of help with the scraper. But it did come off and it printed out perfectly. And as you can see, it is completely flexible. Seeing that I printed this out of TPU. Now let's see if they'll actually work on the part that I made them for. So these are some cheap F1 style mirrors. And these are pretty much universal. And don't come with any type of gasket or seals or anything. So that's why I made my own. And look at that, it looks like it fits perfectly. As I was doing all this, a friend of mine was complaining about a part that they were trying to print on their new printer using TPU, and it was just stringing like crazy. So I had them send over the STL file, and I sliced it just using the generic settings for TPU, and it looks like it came off the printer pretty much perfect, with no stringing whatsoever. So I've also been working on a new mounting assembly for the mirrors on my MX3. So I did a quick 3D scan of the area, so I have a reference. And now with this scan, I can start working on a mounting system, seeing that I have all the correct positions for all the mounting holes. Just for prototyping, I'm going to be using some PLA from Polymaker. This is some stuff I have left over. And here we go, I have my prototype mounting assembly. It comes in really handy to be able to print small parts that are not the full piece to make sure you have everything just right. And because I was able to work off a 3D scan of this, everything lines up perfectly. I also 3D scanned the entire stock mirror assembly. That way I have more reference points when I make my own assembly. And for the most part, the scan came out pretty nice. Besides on the mirror part itself, you can see a little bit of doubling, but I don't need that part. I just need the actual mounting area shape. But this is where we're going to stop on this for now, and I'll make a full video on how I make my own custom mirrors in the future. So subscribe if you want to see that. But that's enough about all the stuff I printed for myself. Let's go over the differences between the Neptune 3 and the Neptune 3 Pro. And as you can see with them side by side, they do look a bit different. And like I've already talked about, the Pro is a direct drive. And the standard Neptune 3 is a Bowden setup. The Neptune 3 also has its power supply just right on the back side of it. And the Pro has moved it to the underside of everything, so it's out of the way. Both printers do have filament runout sensors that are based on movement, so if you have a jam or if it breaks before it, it will stop the print. And the Pro does come with dual Z lead screws now, and the Neptune 3 only came with a single one. Both printers come with the same PEI flexible build plates that are magnetic, and they're both the same size. 
When it comes to the hot end on the Neptune 3, it's a pretty basic setup, and sadly the Bowden tube goes all the way down to the nozzle. And the auto bed leveling is done with a pressure switch. When it comes to the Pro's hot end, there's a lot more going on. Because it's direct drive, it has its stepper motor here, but it also has a dual gear extruder built in. And the auto bed leveling is done with this little sensor that doesn't need to come in contact with anything. And this hot end was looking really promising, until I found this PTFE tube with the machine. Because it was looking like this was going to be an all metal hot end. So I had to remove the nozzle and check, and sadly it's not. I know that they make higher temperature PTFE tube now. That has a max temp of about 260C, and this machine is rated up to 260C. So honestly, this might not be a problem whatsoever, but something to keep an eye on. I am happy that they decided to use MK8 nozzles, so you're going to have tons of options for that. Overall, this is a pretty good printer out of the box, and really easy to set up and get printing thanks to its auto bed leveling system. And as of recording this, this printer is only $230, which is really cheap for what you're getting. And I'm going to be making more videos showing how to actually use these machines to make things that didn't exist before or for custom things. So I really suggest subscribing if you're interested in stuff like that, because I have a ton of content in the works that is not just reviewing different types of machines. But anyways, leave a comment if you have any questions, and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.